But okay, battery's bad. Take the battery off, take it in time. Get a brand new battery last night, put it on, crank the tractor up, fires up, great. Woohoo! Must have been the battery. Come out this morning, go to turn the key on, totally dead. Totally, totally dead. Not even a click. So something drained the battery overnight, which means I probably didn't need that brand new battery, you know, all like $160 for a stupid battery. Alright, so Rita throwing fits again. How'd y'all like that? Uh, clean the lens off a little bit. Yeah, so Rita's throwing fits, and um, it's been just non stop pretty much. Broke that oil filter off the bottom, and no sooner than I got that fixed, uh, the battery went kaput. Now, this was an odd one, and this is what I'm working on now. The tractor has always started and ran fine, never given me any problems. And I was uh, working on backing up the trailer with the bucket, not that that matters. And I went to jump on and turn the key. And to start this tractor, you got to pull the lever up, which is the fuel cutoff, and then turn the key. Otherwise, you just turn the key on, and it'll sit there and crank and crank and crank, but not get fuel. So anyway, I did that. I, I hit the key, and then I was like, oh, shoot, stop. So I let off the key, pulled the lever, went to bump the key again, totally dead. Not a click, not a slow roll, nothing. And so I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, when you get absolutely no no response, then that's that's a bad ground. So I check all my battery cables, check my positive, check my negative. Nope, they're all tight. Try it again um, after cleaning everything and tightening it back down. No luck. Now, I was turning the key on, and normally when you just turn the key on to the to like to the run position before you actually turn to the start position, you'll hear the fuel pumps and they're kind of brrrr. well, it wasn't doing that. But what I could hear was this kind of buzzing in the dash of the tractor. And then it would stop. So I thought, okay, there's a relay in there that's shorted out. That relay sitting there buzzing and getting hot and then cutting out or something like that. So I take the whole dash apart, looking for the relay. I finally find the relay, pull it out. Looks fine to me. Of course, it's one of those weird things where it's like, good luck finding this relay, you know. Um, but I found it, pulled it out, looked fine. So I thought, okay, well, maybe my starter took a crap because I thought if it's a relay, if it's any sort of relay or sensor or safety switch, you can always jump the starter solenoid and bypass all of that and basically hotwire the tractor. So I tried that. I tried to jump the starter, and that didn't work. And when I did, it, it, I would see just a real faint little spark. That was it. Man, it's like smoky looking out here. Anyway, I would see just a real faint little spark, but not even enough to bump the starter. So I thought, okay. Maybe the starter went bad. Now, mind you, when all this first happened, the first thing I did was I grabbed my electrical tester and I checked the voltage on the battery and it read 12.6, which yeah, a fully, fully charged battery should be like 13.2 or something like that. But anyway, it said 12.6. So I was like, that should absolutely be enough to at least roll the starter, or at least do something, but nothing. So I pull the starter off the tractor, take it into town, shop test it. He says, no nah, man, your starter is great. Spins up great. Nothing wrong with your starter. Christ. So he says, I bet it's your battery. I said, no, I checked my battery. I tested my battery. It was fine. He says, well, go home, put your starter back on. He said, try to jump it off another vehicle and see, maybe it is your battery. So I get home, hook the jumper cables up to the truck. Sure enough, it starts cranking over, but not enough to start, which makes sense. It requires a big power draw. The jumper cables have a lot of resistance. So, okay. So then, well, I'll sit here and let it charge for a while. Well, I'll let it sit there and run and charge for 10 minutes. Went to bump the key. Same thing barely any juice so okay now the battery's not wanting to hold a charge so I get to look at the battery well it's date stamp is March of 2011 okay we're talking we're November 2019 now so I'm like okay good chance the battery just took a dump now I've never had a battery just quit on me right like that just lickety split I've always had them get weak and start to you know lose one cell or whatever but okay battery's bad take the battery off take it in time get a brand new battery last night put it on Crank the tractor up, fires up, great. Woohoo! Must have been the battery. 
come out this morning, go to turn the key on, totally dead. Totally, totally dead. Not even a click. So something drained the battery overnight, which means I probably didn't need that brand new battery. You know, all like $160 for a stupid battery. So now I'm chasing gremlins and I'm chasing a dead short. I've begun to find where it's at. So after all that story, I was just going to tell you guys what I'm doing. So, first thought was, maybe the alternator's not charging the battery. Every now and then, my belt will squeal a little bit. So I check on here. My alternator belt was super loose. Uh, shame on me, it was super loose. But I tightened it up, no problem. Now it's so tight that it'll probably snap when I start the tractor. But it's good and tight. And I'm starting to track down where this fault might be. So what I've done was while I was working on the alternator, I disconnected the positive battery cable and I've got the, the battery charger just on the battery, trying to charge it up at least. Um, and so what I did was I thought, well here, I'm gonna, now that I've tightened up my alternator, I'm gonna go to start the tractor real quick and just see what it does. And I went to put the positive battery cable back on the positive post and when I did, sparks flew. Okay, so that tells me now there's a dead short somewhere in the positive line because when I touch it back to the battery, it instantly creates a circuit. So the first thing I did to confirm, to chat or to, try to sort of cross off, was I totally disconnected the alternator. It's got the main wire that goes to it to charge the batteries and it's got a little sensor wires coming off of it. Disconnected both of those. So the alternator was now isolated. And I just touched the post back again. Maybe I can show you guys. Let's see if you guys can see what I can see. See the positive battery post right there. I don't know if you guys can see or hear the sparks. It's daylight out. Oh yeah, you can see them. Okay, so that's with the alternator totally disconnected. So something in this line is shorting out. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my starter again. Now we checked the starter yesterday and they said it was fine. That it was working fine and spinning fine. But it could be that it's got a dead short. So I'm going to disconnect the starter. I'm going to do the same thing with the cable and see if it uh, zaps and sparks like that. I suspect that it will. Even though it looks like it's in a wiring loom, it looks like it has insulation all the way around. Something somewhere has rubbed a hole. And I just have to find it, which is going to suck. Anyway, just want to tell you what's going on. I'm going to work on it for a while, and hopefully I remember to tell you what I found. Okay, so just give you guys a little update on what I've tracked so far. It's not the alternator, and it's not the starter. I was thinking maybe it was in this big main lead cable because of how bad it was sparking, but I pulled it out. Can't find any faults in that. And um, so what I did was I disconnected. I, I still had this connected, which this is part of your main wire that jumps back over to the alternator but it goes into this other wiring harness with a few other things and I'm thinking maybe somewhere in there two wires have rubbed together to create the fault I have to take all that apart uh, but what I did was actually disconnected this and hooked my cable back up to the starter and back to the battery and it's not faulting out now and then I used a screwdriver here um, from our signal wire to the main and <laughs> hot wired the tractor to get it started moved around and I took the boom off so now I can actually get in here and work um, so now I can at least start the tractor and drive it around I'll be at not ideal everything all the hydraulic functions and everything are working um, but yeah I got that boom out of the way so still still chasing still trying to figure out what goes on in here where some wires trade places or some, some it's like there's two harnesses that are taped together for some reason um, so anyway I don't know this this part of it here goes on up to the signal wire off the alternator um, and it does the main lead wire back off the alternator and it runs some wires up to the thermostat what well, looks like the thermostat anyway so I've just got to figure out I think it's somewhere down inside of here. I just, gosh darn. Because if there, there's wires crossing together in here, well then this goes down and goes into God knows what. Runs off and goes all over the place. And the back side of it here goes off and 
goes into, yeah, more of God knows what. So who knows? I'm just gonna keep going bit by bit anywhere that I can and see what I can find. Yeah! I win again! Little Rita, I win again. Um, just started her up here. I'll tell you where I found the fault. Actually, I'm not gonna shut it off so you can hear, but I've got it all starting through the key and everything again. Oh, we found the fault. And it is right here on top for the glow plugs. This wire, if I can move it all, this wire right here has a lot of the insulation peeling off. I can't actually see any bare wires on it anywhere, like any bare copper, and I can't see like an arc where it looked like it's shorting out, but that's absolutely definitely it. It could be, I guess, that maybe one of the glow plugs themselves sorted out uh, and it's causing the problems, but just disconnect this bad boy so now my glow plugs don't work. By the way, that's what that relay is. This is that relay that I took off yesterday that I could hear it buzzing and then it would shut off, which makes sense. It's the glow plug relay. So it's on for a, it's on for a minute to warm the, warm the engine, then it shuts off. Um, so just disconnected, not that one, this one. It connects in back down here. So that's just the power wire to the glow plugs, and that would make sense because that's a, a pretty big wire. So that makes sense why it was pulling as hard as it was. Um, I'm thinking how I tracked that down. I was working in here, I had this disconnected, so I knew it was here, and I traced it back up, and I fought with this massive plug for a little while, and I thought, God, I hope it's not that, but there's, there is a wad of wires right here and behind there that I thought, gosh, if it's that, that's gonna really suck. But you keep in mind that there's not very many circuits that should be active with the key off. That's the good thing. There's very few things that with the key off should be drawing power or should be tied in with the positive circuit. Um, and I'm actually a little surprised that the glow plug relay is one of those. It doesn't really make sense to me. Um, and maybe it could be that the relay is, that the relay itself is still the fault point and it's just letting power bypass straight to the glow plugs. That could be the issue. That's why I plugged this back in. I think that's just a signal wire that goes back up to the key. I'm not sure, but it is, it's part of that same wiring loom anyway. Um, but I plugged it back in and it's still not shorting out. So I, basically I unplugged a whole bunch of things till it stopped shorting out and then I started plugging them back in one by one. Like I said, this wire being all nasty looking, the insulation breaking off, that makes sense. But it doesn't make sense to me that it's drawing power when the key is off. So it very well still could be um, inside that relay. But anyway, we figured it out for now. So the tractor is now, can start, can run, can be reliable. I've determined that I do not have, you know, the, the alternator should be working. The starter is working. Um, tightened the belt, which is good because it was super loose anyway. So the only thing for now that I don't have is working glow plugs. Oh well. Um, I guess I can check this. I can check from here to the negative with the key off or check to the frame and see if that's carrying power right now. Then that would tell me that it's a failure inside the relay and not inside this wire. Let me check that just to see what I find. Okay, let me see if I can get this one handy for you. So this is the wire coming out of the glow plug relay. This is my test light. Whoop, did you see it? Whoop, ding, 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 ding. So the fault is not in this wire, as nasty as it looks. The fault is somewhere prior to it, likely inside the relay itself. So now I know, too, I can check with my parts guy and tell him that I need the glow plug relay because I wasn't sure if it was bad or not. And it's, you know, maybe it's still working. Maybe the glow plugs still turn on. I don't know, but it's definitely not working if it's shorting out and killing my battery. So anyway, that's going to be it for now. Chasing, uh, chasing a fault on Rita here. Um, I'll see if I can get those new parts and hopefully get it fixed. Until then, I'll just run without glow plugs. It doesn't get that cold down here anyway.